Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurifil, Aurifil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Clockworks, inspiring creativity with art on fabric. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havel's. P&B, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Quiltology, the urban quilt space. Quilty. All right, Quilty viewers, you are brilliant. You are ready for a little something more. Today, part one of Paper Piecing Basics. Hey, everybody. So we've split this episode, uh, this lesson, into two episodes because paper piecing, it's a whole new world, y'all. Uh, if you've never done paper piecing before, if you don't even know what it is, starting out with no knowledge, even starting out with some knowledge of it, is really kind of a brain melt moment, I think, for a lot of people who start out quilting, cutting strips with the rotary cutter, and that's an awesome way to make quilts, and you can make quilts your whole life that way and be so happy. But there are other methods for making quilts, and quilty is a beginner show, but you really can't have a quilting show without talking about foundation piecing at some point, and the time is now. So we're gonna do that, and we've separated it into two episodes because there's just a lot to go over. And I teach this show how I would like to be taught and how I kind of learn. So you're kind of the mercy of like how I learned how to do this uh, and, the, and the slow, like thorough nature <laughs> that I needed uh, it explained to me. So I'm gonna do the same for you and I hope that it'll help you because uh, I learned to do this not very long ago. So foundation piecing, a few things that I think you need to know right off the bat uh, is that you sew on paper, right? You actually sew onto a piece of paper. You sew fabric onto paper and then later you tear the paper away. So if you don't know that, now you do, right? And when you're foundation piecing, you actually put paper through your sewing machine. Now there are lots of different kinds of foundation papers. Uh, here's an example of one. This is one kind of foundation paper. Uh, you can get stuff that's really, really thin like tissue paper. Some stuff is water soluble that like goes away with water. It's pretty amazing. There's all kinds of different uh, foundation papers out there, but they're all pretty lightweight like uh, this paper here. It looks like regular uh, typing paper or uh, printer paper, but it's actually much thinner, almost like a, a newsprinty kind of feel when you touch it. But you can run these papers through your printer. And a lot of times when you get your pattern off of the internet or if you download it from a magazine, uh, you will print it out at home and you will print it on paper like this or something similar. Another way that you would get a piece of foundation paper, uh, foundation paper pattern which looks something like this. This is the one we're gonna use. I'll take this away and put that out. This is our, our pattern, our foundation paper pattern that we're gonna use on this, on this lesson. And you would get something like this, your block pattern, whatever it is that you're sewing, uh, from the internet, from a book, from a magazine. Um, you're always gonna have a pattern that you're working off of, unless you design it yourself, which you could do. I actually put that little kite shape together myself. But you've got this paper. That's how you start. Begin at the beginning. This is your foundation paper, okay? And this is the block that we're going to end up with at the end of this lesson. And I've made another one here just kind of as an example. This is a different size, but, but you can see two examples of a paper piece block here. And it's like, well, why would you do this? Why would you do a foundation pieced block if you could just do it with strip sets and you could do it the, the way that we do a lot of the quilts here on Quilty? And the answer to that is a couple, it's manifold. Uh, one of the reasons why you would do a, a paper piece block is because these points that you get are so sharp and crisp with a paper foundation, a foundation piece block that it's just kind of hard to resist. And there are some patterns that really call for those laser sharp points and paper piecing is really the only way to go. Uh, another reason why you would paper piece is if you have this asymmetrical design. Uh, if you tried to do this without paper piecing, you'd have to use several templates. Um, it, would, it might take a little bit longer. It's just a different process. You could do it with templates, but paper piecing is a better way to go about this. And paper piecing is actually really fun once you get the hang of it, but it does take some time. So, uh, one other thing I want to tell you before I start getting into the nitty-gritty and 
where I'm going to just start this and then we're going to come back next week and finish it because like I said, there's lots of information and I want to go slow with you. But one thing I want to tell you about it before we get started is that paper piecing used to be a really very popular way to make quilts. If you go to a museum and see quilts hanging in a museum and you're lucky enough to be able to see the back, if the curators will show you the back of the quilt, a lot of times if you look closely you will see bits of newsprint stuck in the back of those quilts, in the back of the quilt top, because the women used newsprint and they were paper piecing on on newspapers and they picked most of the newspaper off the back of their quilt top. but Inevitably, there was a bit of newsprint left in the seams, and you can see that, and it's really, really, really cool. But this used to be kind of the main way before rotary cutters came along and rotary cutting mats that revolutionized quilting. But long ago, they did it this way. So it's also kind of a heritage thing to know how to do this because it's, uh, it's kind of part of the history of quilt making in America and around the world. Okay, so enough talking. Let's take a look at how to begin to do it. Okay. Um, we're just going to begin with our first piece of fabric and we're going to grab it here. What you need to know about foundation piecing, two things. You're always going to sew on the darkest, clearest line of your paper. We're going to do a lot of flipping back and forth and we're going to do that next time. But as we flip this paper back and forth, back and forth, it can get confusing on which side you want to sew on. Whatever side is the clearest and the brightest and the most bold that faces up towards you, that's the side you want to sew, okay? And the other thing that you should just kind of understand is that we're going to build this block from the back. Like we build it out toward the world and we're kind of in behind the scenes making this block. So that'll make more sense as we go along. To get started, and then you're going to put this away until next week because this is all the time we have today. We're just going to get you started, give you a taste. Get a piece of fabric that is at least a quarter inch bigger on all sides than the piece that you're putting down first. This orange is definitely bigger than this kite shape on all sides, right? Definitely bigger. You want a lot of extra fabric, especially when it's your first time. Flip your paper over, cover the shape with your fabric. You're going to put back side of the fabric to the back side of your paper. I'm going to pin it in place. To keep it there, you can use a little spot of glue. Hold it up to the light. Make sure you've got it covered. Some quilters have light boards, but we don't have that today. We're just going to hold it up to the light and make sure we can see. Yep, we've got tons of fabric on all sides of our kite shape. Awesome. And we've got our first piece laid down for our first episode on paper piecing. I don't mean to give you a cliffhanger, but I have to because we're out of time. Next time, we're going to pick it right back up and keep it going. So put this to the side. Sew something else. We'll see you next week. Join us on Twitter. Tell us how, what do you think? Are you excited? Do you want to know more? We want to know. Okay? So we'll see you soon and we'll keep going. Bye. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurifil, Aurifil Italian Thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Clothworks, inspiring creativity with art on fabric. Havel's Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havel's. EMB, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Quiltology, the urban quilt space.